The video you just watched shared new practices and enhancements that are in place for our safety. The district will continue to upgrade and add to these types of systems and practices as we're able, but I want to share another important practice that we have in place as well. Each year, a emergency plan is created for your school. Information from the Kentucky Center for School Safety is used to create this plan and it includes emergency contact numbers for the district and also for the school, for those uh, people that will be responding in, in case of emergencies. It also includes uh, building security procedures, universal emergency procedures of what we do during uh, fire drills, uh, earthquakes, severe weather, uh, and those types of things. It also includes responsibilities for staff. It talks about the incident command system, of who's in charge and what responsibilities they have. It includes a response team for the school. If you're assigned a response during an emergency, the principal will let you know. The room is a uh, emergency procedures guide or flip chart that gives directions for many different situations. If you need one of these, please let your principal know so he or she can get a chart for you and your area. We'll go over the safety folder prior to the first day of students. They'll also schedule drills throughout the year for practice. Supervision and situational awareness are key to safety as well. Make sure you fulfill your duty supervisions um, at your principal's request, whether it's hall duty, bus duty, uh, car rider, playground, early morning duty, whatever it is. All those are important and all of those need to be taken seriously. Our emergency responders meet with us throughout the year to address issues and concerns we have. They also receive updated copies of the school folders each and every year. And they provided training already on avoid, deny, defend, and stop the bleed. And I'm sure we'll continue to do so as needs arise. During the year, you may be asked to stay after school to attend an update with an SRO, school resource officer, or local responder. I hope you'll make it a priority to stay and learn from them. Make sure you attentively watch Avoid, Deny, Defend video because it's an important part of our safety practices. Thanks for all you do daily for our students to keep them safe. There's a gunman inside the store. We need help now. Do anything last weekend? Yeah. Uh, that was very nice, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. How's it about is the new system enhancement? What's going to be the solution by the time we? All right, thank you. Appreciate it. I actually, think he's got an old. Well, he's got a truck. I don't know if your daughter would be interested. There's a gunman inside the store. He's shooting the place up. We need help now. Issues that we found. Okay, Emily, see what that is. See what's going on. Just let us know what you find out. There's a man with a gun. He's right there. I 
you. There you go. <laughs> You're safe for that. There's a guy with a gun. He's shooting. Look. James, what do I have to no, do? No, look. Run. 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 To the right. To the right. To the loading dock. Come on. This way. This way. This way. Yeah, in here, in here. The gunman's coming. What are we gonna do? We're gonna have to defend ourselves. I, I can't do this. You're gonna see your daughter tonight, okay? We are all going to go home tonight, all right? We have a right to defend ourselves. Get the gun! Hey. Hold him down, hold him down. If you ever have the misfortune to be in an active shooter event, you deserve to survive. In our research, we have found that the actions that potential victims take during these events are critical to their survival. We have identified three options that have proven effective in many events. These are, avoid the attacker, deny the attacker access to your area, Defend yourself. It is a personal decision, but you have a right to do so. Avoiding the attacker starts with being aware of your surroundings at all times and knowing what is going on around you. If you see or hear something that looks suspicious, take action. For example, the stalker took immediate and effective action to protect himself when he observed the shooter pulling out weapons from the bag. Others, however, hesitated, and this hesitation can cost them valuable time that they could have used to get away from the threat. If you hear something that is, or could be, gunfire, start trying to get away from it as soon as possible. Gunfire has a distinctive sound. Inside of buildings, the sound can be muffled or distorted. A single loud bang could be a person dropping something, or even thunder. But repeated loud bangs are much more likely to be gunfire. Additionally, look at the reaction of others. Are they startled or scared? Are they running? What are they saying? Any one of these events individually may create denial, but when put together, should create a heightened awareness and stimulate an immediate response. It is important that you know how to get out. The situation will be chaotic and rapidly changing. In general, you will want to go to the nearest exit. But you must also understand that the closest exit may not be accessible or safe to use. If this is the case, go to a different exit. While avoiding the threat, consider the uses of cover and concealment. Cover offers protection from gunfire while concealment minimizes your exposure to the attacker. Try to keep objects between you and the attacker. If you can't avoid the attacker, sometimes the best option will be to deny the attacker access to your location. In many locations, this can be accomplished by closing and locking a door, such as they did in the meeting room. Locking the door has proven effective in many attacks. If the door does not have a lock, you can place heavy objects in front of it. 
Remember, barricades work best if the door opens toward you. If it doesn't, use things that are readily available, such as straps, belts, or objects that can be used to block or secure the door to make it difficult for the attacker to enter the room. This may at least slow the attacker down and give you time to identify alternate means of escape, such as adjoining rooms or windows. When attempting to deny access to your location, you want to make it appear that there is no one in your area. Lock doors, turn off the lights, silence your phones, and get out of sight. Your attempt to deny the attacker access to your location might fail. The gunman's coming. What are we going to do? We're going to have to defend ourselves. Have a backup plan about what you will do. In many cases, this may be to defend yourself. You need to be in a place where you can act if the attacker comes into your location. In most rooms, you will line up against the same wall that the door is on, near the door so you can react, but not directly in front of it. If you are unable to avoid or deny, your best option may be to defend yourself by using whatever is available. In a situation where someone is attempting to kill you, you have the legal right to defend yourself. Attack weak spots such as eyes, throat, and groin. Fight to the best of your ability and do not quit until the attacker is stopped. Get the gun! This is what the workers in the warehouse did when they were unable to avoid the attacker and felt their lives were in immediate danger. Whatever option you choose, call 911 as soon as you are in a safe location. Provide any information that you know. The operator will ask you a lot of questions. If you don't know the answer, don't guess. Just say you don't know and only state the facts. This will be a complex situation and we can't tell you what you should do in every case. What we can do is provide you with information about the options that we have found to be most effective for surviving these attacks. The ultimate choice is yours. What you do matters. Avoid the attacker. Deny access to your location. Defend yourself. Law enforcement will be entering a chaotic scene with limited information. Their first priority will be to stop the threat to your safety. The police may not know where or who the threat is. Listen and comply with their commands immediately. Put it down, put it down, sir. Put it down, both of you on the ground. Police are trained to look at people's hands to assess threats. Do not have anything in your hands that could be perceived as a weapon, such as a cell phone. Show me your hands, sir. Show me your hands, move to us. Everybody, keep your hands up, please. Walk out the door. If told to do so, stay where you are and do not make sudden movements. Again, follow all commands. Remember, what you do matters. Avoid the attacker. Deny access to your location. Defend yourself. Remember, A-D-D. -D. You can survive.